Welcome Climate Viewers. My name is Jim Lee from Climate Viewer News at climateviewer.com, climateviewer.org, and weathermodificationhistory.com. It is June 27th, 2018, and today we're going to talk about genetically modified bacteria-laden mosquitoes dropped in Florida and the effects on uh, human health, um, things like that. Now, most of you probably never heard of entomological warfare, um, but this has a long history, and I'm going to get right into that before we start talking about the mosquitoes. Now, of course, uh, everything you're about to see is open source, free of charge. I only ask that if you're going to support me, please monthly do that on my Patreon, um, or you can uh, buy me a coffee on PayPal as a thank you for this research. In addition, I'm doing a GoFundMe for my um, health concerns with Graves' disease at GoFundMe.com slash FixMyThyroid. Um, any support you give me is greatly appreciated. Um, so let's go right to the, the history of this. Now, I wrote this in 2013. Um... It was a conspiracy, military experiments on unsuspecting public. And I go through a couple of things, mainly the Manhattan-Rochester Coalition, where they were, the U.S. Army Chemical Corps was spraying uh, zinc cadmium sulfide all over the United States, and nobody knew about it without public consent. And it says, through this case study, the author explores how a large number of participants inside an organization will willingly participate in organizational acts that are harmful to others and how large numbers of outsiders who may or may not be victims of organizational activities are unable to determine illegal or harmful activity by an organization. So what happened was, you know, the U.S. Army Chemical Corps was studying nuclear winds and releasing radioactive material in you know places like st louis and this is a school clinton school in downtown st louis and the poor black kids were there um you know breathing zinc cadmium sulfide when they died they ground up their thyroids i having a thyroid issue um you know breathing in a whole lot of crazy stuff take that you know to personally to offense and I go through a couple things like Operation Popeye, the defoliant sprayed in Operation Ranch Hand, Trail Dust. But I'm going to skip past all of that and just go right to this. Bug Warfare. Um, Operation Big Itch, 1954, Dugway Proving Grounds. Um, they dropped Tropical Rat Fleas. Um, 1955, Operation Big Buzz, the state of Georgia, dropped... 330,000 uninfected mosquitoes from aircraft in E-14 bombs. Operation May Day, November 1956 in Savannah, Georgia, designed to reveal information about the dispersal of yellow fever mosquitoes in an urban area. The mosquitoes were released from ground level. Operation Dropkick, 1956, Savannah, Georgia. Uninfected mosquitoes were released in a residential neighborhood and another um, 1956 test in Avon Park Bombing Range, Florida, where 600,000 mosquitoes were released by a plane. Um, and you can see the FOIA that came about as a result of that history of field testing um, in the U.S. So this has a long history to it you know u.s government experimenting on you know the public without consent um which brings us directly to our topic of the day bacteria infected mosquitoes released in saint augustine to combat disease um this is dated june 25th 2018 and it was updated june 26th that is yesterday um Science is now weaponizing mosquitoes against themselves. On Tuesday, Wolbachia infected male mosquitoes will be released in St. Augustine from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. The virus does not affect humans. However, it will dwindle the mosquito population. Of the Aedes aegypti mosquitoes, which spread the disease Zika and dengue fever. Now, this original source is from the Orlando Sentinel. Miami releases bacteria infected mosquitoes to help fight Zika virus. So 
is this history repeating itself? Well, I mean, it's in the public, you know, venue. They, you know, want people to know, um, hey, we're going to try to fight um, Zika virus by using other mosquitoes with this Wolbachia virus. And uh, most of you have probably never heard of any of this, so I did a little digging. Um, and, you know, they say here, uh, Miami-Dade County Mosquito Control and Habitat Management Division is releasing non-biting male mosquitoes infected with TU, <laughs> naturally occurring Wolbachia bacteria, to mate with female mosquitoes. The bacteria is not harmful to humans, but will prevent any offspring produced when lab-bred mosquitoes mate with wild female mosquitoes. Lab-bred? Where? At Kentucky-based Mosquito Mate. So mosquito mate um, is right here, and as you can see, they um, you know it's an EPA-approved technology, and they you know release mosquitoes into the wild that they custom breed. This is part of the World Mosquito Program, um, and you can see this at eliminatedengue.com um, on Wolbachia, and uh, you know read the information there kind of creepy um but of course they keep you know reiterating that none of this could possibly affect humans well i found something interesting and uh this is on courtofrecord.org.uk wolbachia in humans and i tried to find the original source there was a presentation made and uh, apparently it's been deleted from the internet. It is not on archive.org, archive.is. I will eventually find this anyway, and I'll link it up on, um, on uh, climateviewer.com. But I wanna focus on this paragraph right here because it's pretty freaking interesting. In 2001, Wolbachia was the subject of a biology project by the University of Wyoming presented in a PowerPoint as a CDC investigative report complete with official looking logos and CDC division of parasites and diseases. The whole thing was entirely hypothetical, although the stir it caused was reminiscent of Orson Welles' famous radio broadcast, War of the Worlds. The instructor, Dr. Marab Ben David, and the author of the presentation was one of her students, Samin Dadelahi. Dadelahi? The premise of the scenario was that Wolbachia bacterium was accidentally had been in, had accidentally been incorporated into bacterium that was vir virulent to humans, thereby causing the local population to display some of the same symptoms as insects do when similarly infected. In the scenario, the symptom that attracted the attention of the CDC was parthenogenesis, females spontaneously cloning daughters. Now, I don't know if this next uh, paragraph is true or not, but in the spring of 2000, the CDC dispatched an investigative team to West Africa where the accident occurred to determine if there was any truth to the rumors of virgin births. The team returned with the conclusion that asexual pregnancies were real. The proof being that only females resulted from the pregnancies and in each case, they were genetic duplicates of their mother, mothers. Further investigation revealed Wolbachia had infected the gametes of the mothers. What? So, I don't know how true this is. I was just looking into, um, you know, what's the chances that this Wolbachia bacteria could infect humans? Um, you know, anytime we modify genetic, you know, genetically modify organisms or what's called sin bio or synthetic biology, um, the chance of it mutating, infecting humans is always a possibility, super scary. But when we're talking about, um, you know, Miami releasing thousands, millions, who knows, of custom bred bacteria laden um, mosquitoes to help bite, fight the Zika virus. Um, well, I'm glad I'm not in Miami. That's all I have to say about that. So let's move along. Um, I was looking at, 
you know, an overview of current status of Zika virus pathogenesis, pathogenesis and animal related research. And uh, you can see right about here, um, Zika was first found in 1947 in the Zika forest of Uganda. Um, and, you know, it goes on dengue fever, 1943, Nagasaki, Japan, and a couple other diseases. But, um, you know, so Zika has been around for a long time, apparently. And, you know, this whole using the Wolbachia bacteria idea is kind of new. Um, you know, using that, um, you know, obviously yellow fever and West Nile virus is another you know, I live in Sumter, South Carolina. We deal with mosquitoes. Um, we get sprayed regularly, and I hate it. Um, personally, you know, I've, I've you know gotten headaches. You know, I I hear the trucks go by, and I quickly close all my windows, running for cover. Um, but you know, that's just something we have to deal with down here. Um, and those sprays. Um, typically what they use is something called Nolid. That's what they use in my hometown. I went up to the health department to ask specifically what the hell they were spraying. Um, interesting paper here. Study links mosquito spray to delayed motor skills in babies. So if you have children, I have children. I have one daughter that's two years old. My other's eight. Um, you know, having a truck come by and spray a whole bunch of Nolid, probably not a good idea. Nolad, the main chemical ingredient in the bug spray used in Miami to ward off Zika carrying mosquitoes, has an association with reduced motor function in infants, according to a study published Thursday in the environmental journal Environmental International. Um, University of Michigan researchers found that children in China who had the highest prenatal exposure to Nolad had at age nine months, 3% to 4% lower scores on their tests of fine motor skills, which are the small movements of hands, fingers, mouth, and feet compared to those with the lowest exposure. Um, so mosquito sprays, um, chemtrails from trucks, not cool. Um, you can read about Nolad on um, the EPA website. Of course, they say it's completely safe, just like they're saying about these, you know, bacteria-infected mosquitoes. Um, I will link all of these links up on climateviewer.com after I publish this video on YouTube. Um, but basically, it, you know, it kind of looks like this. Uh, this is from China or, you know, some Asian country. But this is a ground-based mosquito sprayer, fogger. It uses a electrostatic um, spraying mechanism. And oh, there's the kids just playing in it. Um, oh, wow, that really took her breath away. Um, you know, this is what's, these are what I typically see in Sumter, South Carolina. Um, truck usually has a big bottle on it. The spray points upwards and you can hear them going by and I hear them, you know, off in the distance, I'm running to close all my windows. Um, if you're not from the South, you probably haven't experienced this. Um, but you know, they've even got them on, you know, motorcycles somewhere in this video there. Check this one out. This is pretty epic. <laughs> I mean, look at that guy. He's in full gear. You know what I mean? Like, uh, got a respirator on and everything oh but it's completely safe you know totally safe um but mosquito vector control as they call it or disease vector control big time um happened during the uh you know the bp oil spill um as you can see here also known as adulticide um this is from williston vector control um, and you can see right here, this is a Air Force plane. Let me kill the sound on that. Flying over, spraying, Nolad. Same stuff. Um, so yeah, we're, you know, there are different types of chemtrails. Um, these are obviously a few of them. <laughs> and uh, disease vector control, the mosquito sprays, um, they're flown, uh, you know, by the Air Force. Air Force flies into town to rid town of flies. Um, and you can see here, this is also in Williston. 
um, you know, what we are using in the spray is a, a biological larvicide. It's a bacterium that's found in soil, but it's specific endospores that attach us to the stomachs of mosquitoes. So this is a larvicide as opposed to adulticide. Adulticide is killing the adult mosquitoes. Larvicide infects, um, you know, water banks where the mosquitoes would grow. Um, so they spray these chemicals to, you know, kill the larva before they're born. It, you know, fills rivers and streams. Not a good idea in my personal opinion. And who does this? Uh, that's out of Youngstown Air Reserve Station, and you can see Aerial Spray Mission. The Department of Defense tasked the 910th Airlift Wing at Youngstown Air Reserve Station, Ohio, to maintain the DOD's only large area fixed wing aerial spray capability to control disease-carrying insects, pest insects, undesirable vegetation, and disperse oil spills in large bodies of water. So if you're looking for the Air Force to spray chemtrails, Youngstown Air Reserve Station is the number one spot in America. And, you know, they, they have many different spray apparatus. As you can see in the photo um, right here, uh, you know, a lot of people show this as, you know, a chemtrail plane. Um, and it is a chemtrail plane, but it's not making clouds, it's killing bugs, it's killing plants, and cleaning up oil spills. So, common misconception, people see these huge, you know, bottles on, um, you know, in these planes, and then they assume, oh, well, that's how they're making the clouds. No, you're conflating two things. I don't approve of any of this. I think that spraying chemicals over people's head is always a bad idea, um, and that's why I'm pointing this out. So once again, if you want to know who's doing that, it is the 910th Airlift Wing at Youngstown Air Reserve Station, and they've been doing, uh, you know, their modular aerial spray system, mass. Um, you can look that up. Um, there may be some images on that. And what do you see? Bottles, spray bottles, things like that. So yeah, some of the photos that are used in the chemtrail community um, are, are, you know, misused. Um, people don't understand, you know, the, the purpose behind some of this stuff. And like I said in my previous video, I'm going to do a big video on all these spray bottles and the different types and, you know, what they're used for and how, um, you know, a lot of people in the chemtrail community mistake them for cloud making apparatus. But, you know, hey, that's a guy who's spraying Youngstown Air Reserve Station, like I said. And yeah, he's putting chemicals in there to spray. Those are chemtrails by definition. Um, but, you know, check this out. U.S. Air Force Aerial Spray Unit, a history of large area disease vector control operations, World War II through Katrina. Um, from PubMed, you can read the whole history of that. So, yes, there are chemtrails coming from Air Force planes. Yes, they are using bacteria. Yes, they spray them from trucks. Um, Zenimax, uh, Naled, Wolbachia virus are uh, bacteria. And, you know, all of this goes back to, you know, secret government programs back in the 50s and 60s doing the exact same thing. So, those who forget the past are doomed to repeat it. And I just wanted to bring this story to your attention because if you're in the Miami area and you um, happen to start feeling ill or, you know, just keep an eye out for this sort of thing because, you know, it's super creepy to me. I'm sure others will consider it super creepy as well. Um, but that's, that's the nature of the beast. You know, they, um, vaccines are not the only way that you will be introduced to foreign contaminants designed to help you out in the name of public health and disease vector control. And all of this has been signed off by the Center for Disease Controls and the Environmental Protection Agency. So it's got to be safe, right? Um, 
Well, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. You guys watch out for the the, the, the bacteria filled uh, mosquitoes down in Miami. Um, read the article. It was a conspiracy, military experiments on unsuspecting public, and realize that you know there are many different types of chemtrails. I talk about many different kinds. Um, this being one of them, sounding rockets being chemtrails from space, and of course, hashtag hashtag cirrus clouds matter um being the final one but you know we really need to understand you know the big picture and you know i think that people need to wrap their head around this whole mosquito spraying for public safety thing as you know it's a vaccine overhead and i you know i don't personally approve of it i hold my breath every time the truck goes by and God forbid, if it were to affect my children, um, I would lose my marbles on uh, the, the people up there at the health department. And I have given them my peace of mind a couple of times about knowledge. But those are the facts. You've been um, informed, and I hope that you guys will continue to support me on Patreon. If you appreciate this video, hit me up on PayPal. And, you know, if you want to help me out with my personal thyroid issue, uh, GoFundMe.com slash FixMyThyroid. So this is a, a lot of information to digest. Um, I hope that you guys will look into the aerial spray unit. Um, lots of information there for you guys to dig into. And uh, with this information, you know, information is power. And pow with power um, comes great responsibility. So... All I ask is that while you're, uh, you know, raising hell out there with this information, remember to attack ideas, not people. If this video resonates with you, leave me a comment because I love hearing from you all. First time here? Be sure to subscribe and click the bell. The bell doesn't always work, so come to ClimateViewer.com and sign up for our newsletter. Remember, it would be impossible for me to do this without your support, so please join my Patreon or buy me a coffee on PayPal. And always, attack ideas, not people.